Ansible's dynamic inventory feature lets you link an external authoritative source for information about your infrastructure to Ansible. For example, if you've invested in an enterprise-wide configuration management database, it makes sense that you'll use that as the source for your inventory. Ansible can be configured to query your CMDB at runtime to obtain authoritative host patterns for Ansible commands and playbooks. It's also possible in return to write tasks in your provisioning playbooks so Ansible will write data back to the CMDB when new hosts are brought up. Likewise, a host removal playback can update your CMDB to reflect that the host has been retired. Ansible can use LDAP, a cloud API, CMDB, or Cobbler to identify the inventory in your infrastructure dynamically. Once the inventory is identified, Ansible can efficiently target multiple servers in your infrastructure at the same time, executing identical commands on each server. Inventory and playbooks combine to give you full access to automate tasks across your infrastructure using Ansible. Static or dynamic, the inventory is crucial to every task you'll configure and run with Ansible. Obviously, if the information in your inventory is corrupt, then you raise the risk of running automated tasks for the wrong software on the wrong servers. Let's head back to the ping command and make an inventory change. With the Etsy Ansible host file configured as a list of IP addresses, it doesn't give us a way to break the servers out into a subset to run commands against. We want to be able to run commands against one, all, or a subset of hosts. So I'm going to get rid of the phantom server, server and add two labels, one called web, and one called haproxy. To do. So let's say before I did this, just to go back to the importance of making sure the data is correct. Before I did this, let's say we used a, a Git review and a Jenkins validation process to approve these changes, did everything in our power to make sure that we're updating the inventory file with accurate data. So when the label exists in the host file, Ansible will accept the same string as a label to identify host patterns and commands. If we had multiple web servers or multiple HA proxy servers, they could also be listed under the correct label. Ansible will resolve servers in the host file that are listed as IP addresses, host names, fully qualified addresses, or regex patterns that can be used to filter against your naming convention. Using a YAML formatted host file allows for inheritance and nesting to identify the infrastructure inventory in a hierarchy. We'll look at that later. Some thought needs to go into how you format your inventory file to come up with a standard that works for you. If you have a simple infrastructure, you can stick with the flat file. If you have a more complex infrastructure with dependencies, you'll probably want to convert to a YAML format. And then you can always use dynamic inventory so Ansible can pull infrastructure data from a cloud or a traditional data center. So for a simple demonstration of the flexibility and granularity you can achieve when you change your host file, we can now run the same ping command but limit the scope this time to just the web server. Sorry, I did that back wrong order. And this time we should only get one server responding as we did. And likewise for just HA proxy. <clears throat> 